Brother B.A. Ben Abraham, and I'm your host of the Man Up segment on Debate Talk For You platform. The objective is for all brothers from different walks of life to come together, link up, and build on matters concerning all various stages of life. If anyone would like to reach out on concepts and ideas, you can reach Brother B.A. at RadicalRhyme1984 at gmail.com. Again, RadicalRhyme1984 at gmail.com. Tap in. Let's build. Shalom. Shalom. Don't touch that dial. You're now listening to the Bay Talk Free Radio. Today's show is entitled How Did Israel Become Gentiles? Once again, today's show is entitled, How Did Israel Become Gentiles? My special guest is standing by. He's been in the show before, debating inside the lion's den, teaching a few lessons, and he is back once again. He does a lot of work as far as social media is concerned and has a lot of edifying videos out there for you. I'm going to leave more of the links in the description box if you want to reach out to him. This is Yeshua Ben Israel. Welcome to the show. Peace, peace, peace. Uh, shalom, shalom. First and foremost, give honor and praise to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Uh, I was honored and privileged to be on the show. Uh, we're going to go into a lesson. We're talking about basically how the nation of Israel became uh, what you would call uh, Gentile minded in terms of them following out the false gods and taking on the customs and the thoughts and the ideas of the other nations. Um, Where I'm going to go to? Actually, I'm going to start with how Judah took on the Gentile mindset just as well. I'm going to hopefully I can get to Israel later on, the Ten Tribes, and we're going to be talking about how Judah took on the Greek mindset. So, with no further ado, let's get to the lesson. Let's turn to uh, let's turn to Daniel's the turn to Daniel's the eighth chapter. Turn to Daniel's the eighth chapter. We're gonna be talking about. See, because when I talk about in terms of Israel taking on what you call the Gentile mindset, meaning that they had basically started to follow after the other gods of the other nations. You know what I mean? So let's look at something real quick. This is uh, the book of Daniel, the eighth chapter, and I'm going to start reading at verses one. It says, In the third year of the reign of King Belshazzar, a vision appeared unto me. Even unto me, Daniel, after that which appeared unto me at the first, and I saw in a vision, and it came to pass when I saw that I was in Shushan in the palace, which is the province of Elam, and I saw in a vision, and I was by the river Ule. Then I lifted up my eyes and saw, and behold, there stood before the river a ram, which had two horns. Now, this ram that it's talking about is the Medo-Persian Empire. So it says, and the two horns were high, but one was higher than the other, and the higher came up last. And I saw the ram pushing westward, northward, southward, so that no beast might stand before him. Neither was there any that could deliver out of his hands, but he did according to his will, it became great. And I was considering, and behold, a he-goat. And the he-goat represents what you would call the Grecian Empire under uh, Alexander the Greek. So it says, um, a he-goat came from the west on the face of the whole earth and touched not the ground, and the goat had a notable horn between his eyes. Uh, Sixth verse, and he came to the ram, that had two horns, which I had seen standing before the river, and and ran and ran unto him in the fury of power, 
and I saw him close unto the ram, and he was moved with clawed against him and smote the ram and break his two horns, and there was no power in the ram to stand before him. So this is basically Alexander taking power over the over the Medo-Persian Empire. So it says, 8 verse, Therefore the Hego waxed very great, and when he was strong, great horn was broken. And for it came up for, for notable ones toward the four winds of the river. I mean, four winds of heaven. So when it's talking about basically the four um, the four notable ones, it's talking about what? The four generals when Alexander had died. You know what I'm saying? So when he had died, he gave he gave forth his power to his four generals. And we're going to go into some basically a brief lit dissertation on the names of those four generals, if I can find it real quick. Because I know one of the uh, empires was what you would call the Seleucid Empire. And out of the Seleucid Empire came what you call Antiochus. So let me get something real quick. The four generals was Cassandra, Macedonia, uh, Lysoma- Lysomachus, Drace, Thrace, and Asia Minor, Seleucid, the Seleucid Empire, and Ptolemy equals Egypt. So these were the four generals that Alexander had uh, gave power and authority to after he died. So it says, ninth verse, and out of them came forth a little horn, which waxed and seemed great towards the south and towards the towards the east and towards the pleasant land. So I'm going to stop right there because actually you can read the whole chapter yourself. The, the little horn that um, in the ninth verse it says out of one of them came forth the little horn, that is what you would call Antiochus Epiphanes. And see like uh, you're not going to really find the story of Antiochus too much and what you call the Bible of today, you have to go to the Apocrypha. So this is the uh, first, this is First Maccabees, and First Maccabees 13 through 15. And it says, <clears throat> excuse me, then certain other people were so forward therein that they went to the king who gave them license to do after the ordinance of the heathen whereupon they built a place of exercise at Jerusalem according to the customs of the heathen. So we see that when Antiochus had conquered um, Judah, you had certain people, you had certain uh, Judites that basically took on the customs and the traditions of the Greeks. So it says, the 14th verse, whereupon they built a place of exercise at Jerusalem according to the customs of the heathens and made themselves uncircumcised. So when it's talking about uncircumcised, we're looking at both what spiritually and physically. It's because from a spiritual standpoint of view, when you're uncircumcised, mean that what? You're not following the laws and the statutes of the creator anymore, that you have taken on the thoughts and the ideas and the suggestions of the other nations. So the 15th verse says, and made themselves uncircumcised and forsook the holy covenant and joined themselves to the heathens and were sold to do mischief. So you have certain people that was in Judah that took on what you call what? The Gentile mindset in terms of taking on their thoughts, ideas, and their ideology. So let's let's jot over to the 41st verse. Moreover, King Antiochus wrote to his whole kingdom that all should be one people, and everyone should leave his laws so all the heathens agreed according to the commandments of the king. Yea, many also of the Israelites consented to his religion and sacrificed unto idols and profaned the Sabbath. So we see that you had Israel involved in what? Idol worshiping. So it says, for the king has sent letters to letters by messengers unto Jerusalem and the cities of Judah, that they shall follow the strange laws of the land 
and forbid burnt offerings and sacrifices and drink offerings in the temple, and that they should profane the Sabbaths and festival days and pollute the sanctuary and holy people, set up altars and groves and chapels of idols and sacrifice swine's flesh, unclean beasts, that they shall also lead their children uncircumcised. So when he's talking about in this aspect, uncircumcised, just like I just said before, is really talking about both spiritual and literal because in this aspect, a lot of times when the nation of Israel took on the other nations, the other nations' uh, ideologies, they started to do what? They started to act just like the other nations that they wanted to be like. So when it's talking about in the 48 verse that they should also leave their children uncircumcised and make their souls abominable with all manner of of uncleanliness and profanation. So we see that the nation of Israel were doing what? They was not allowing their kids to be circumcised is because of the decree that Antiochus had made when he uh, regained rulership. Because, like I said before, the four generals, each one of them had their own, they was governed over different lands and things of this nature. So Antiochus was the leader, he was the king over what you call the Seleucid Empire. So it says, to the end, that they might forget the law and change all ordinances. Whosoever would not do according to the commandment of the king, he said, he should die. In the self same manner, he wrote to his whole kingdom and appointed overseers over all the people and commanded the cities of Judah to sacrifice <clears throat> city by city. Then many other people were gathered unto them, to wit, every one that forsook the law, and so they com uh, committed evil in the land and drove the Israelites into secret places, even wheresoever they could flee. So you had certain of Judah because this is Judah being under captivity up under the Greeks. So you have certain of Judah, even though the Most High said that it's going to always be a light in the house of David, but you had a certain of, of, of Judah that was going off just as well. And they started to take on the philosophies and the teachings of the Greeks. But you had a certain of Judah that didn't do that. Under who? Mac, uh, uh Judas Maccabeus and all and all his brethren and things of this nature, they rebelled against the Greeks. So I'm going to jot over to the first chapter, sixth chapter of the book of Acts. Because we're talking about how Judah and them, and we're going to get into how uh, the other ten tribes basically how they took on the philosophy just as well. So it says in the sixth chapter of the book of Acts, and I'm going to start reading at the first verse, and it says, In those days when the number of the disciples was multiplied, there arose a murmuring of the Grecians. Now, when you look up that word, Grecians, It'll take you to the word of what? Hellenist. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I had went to the book, uh, the Apocrypha, the first chapter, you know what I'm saying, to show that these individuals was not Grecians. They was Hebrews. They was, they was of the tribe of Judah that took on the philosophy of the Greeks. So anytime in the new in the New Testament when you see the term Greek, you have to understand that these individuals were the same people because according to in the Bible it tells you what uh Hellenistic Grecian Jews. But we have to understand that the nation of Israel never practiced Judaism. So when it's talking about the term Jew, it's talking about Judah. So it says, the sixth chapter in the first verse, in those days when the murmuring of the disciples was multiplied, there arose a murmuring 
of the Grecians against the Hebrews because their widows were neglected in the daily ministration. So what is taking place here? You have two fractions of people arguing over what? About the law. You know what I'm saying? It's because when you look at the term widows and things of this nature, you have to go back to the Old Testament to understand that was in the law, that the nation of Israel had to take care of their widows and things of this nature. So most people look at that term, Grecian, they look at Greeks converting over to um, Israel's uh, converting to Judaism. But like I just said, that Judaism, See, the term Judaism of today is a is a religion that was created by heathens. But that's not even the lesson today. But see, when you look at the term Jew, you have to look at you have to look at that situation, understand that the term Jew only means what? Judah, Levi, and Benjamin. So and mainly Judah, you know what I'm saying? Because according to the creator, the creator said there's gonna always be a light. In the house of David, I think that's what the eleventh chapter of the book of First Kings, when Solomon rebelled against the Creator, following out the false gods. So, when we look at this terminology of Grecians, we have to understand that these were Israelites of the tribe of Judah, some of Benjamin, and some of Levi. That what that was returning back to their co- their customs and traditions is because. They was the children that parent their parents had rebelled against the creator under the rulership of what you call Antiochus. So let's look at another scripture real quick. Let's turn to um Acts the ninth chapter. The ninth chapter and I'll start reading verses twenty six through twenty nine. It says and when Shaul was come, which is Paul, when Shaul was come to Jerusalem, he essayed to join himself to the disciples. But they were all afraid of him and believed not that he was a disciple. But Barnabas took him and brought him to the apostles and declared unto him how he had seen the master in the way. And that he had spoken to him and how he had preached boldly at Damascus in the name of Yahshua. And he was with them coming in and going out at Jerusalem. And he spake boldly in the name of the master Yahshua and disputed against the Grecians. Now we see that terminology again, Grecian. See, we have to understand that the term Grecian is talking about Israelites that took on the Greek culture because in order for you to understand that you will have to read the history of the Maccabees so it says but they went about to slay him see so you had certain Greeks that what that was against Paul and Barnabas you know what I'm saying because why they was teaching um they they was they was under the influence of the teaching of Yahshua Hamashiach. So you had certain Grecians that was following after the Greek culture. They still knew that they was Israel, but they was what? They had become heathens. You know what I'm saying? Because they had taken on the mindset of these individuals. So it says what? Well, let's turn to um the eleventh chapter the 11th chapter of the book of Acts 19 and 20. So it says, Now they which were scattered abroad upon the persecution that arose about Stephen traveled as far as Phoenice and Cyprus and Antioch, preaching uh, the word to none none but unto uh, Judah only, because... When Yahshua himself, when he came on the scene, he said what? I am sent, but to who? The lost sheep of the house of Israel. So when when Paul and them was preaching and, and, and Peter and all them, they had to go to Judah first. 
And see, when uh, when Paul was preaching to Judah, they didn't hearken unto what he was talking about. So he had to do what? He had to go to the Gentiles. So um, we're going to get to who the Gentiles was in the next in, in the next lesson. So it says, and some of them were men of Cyprus and Cyrene, and which when they were come to Antioch, spake unto the Grecian, preaching the master Yahshua. But let's jive back up to the 19th verse. Now, when they were scattered abroad upon the persecution that arose about Stephen and traveled as far as Phoenice and Cyprus and Antioch, preaching the word to none but unto Judah only. So what is the city of Antioch? The city of Antioch is what? That's a city that was named after what? Antiochus. So you have the nation of Israel that was scattered at where? In Antioch, Cyprus, and Phoenice. You know what I'm saying? This this is where they was preaching to. They was preaching to those those the scattered dispersed of what? The house of Israel. Starting with Judah first and then which is the southern kingdom and then what? Um the northern kingdom, which were the ten tribes. So let's look at another chapter real quick. Let's turn to the tenth chapter. Nah, let's turn to um where I'm gonna go at sixteenth chapter of the book of Acts. Sixteenth chapter of the book of Acts, verses one through five. Then came then came he to Derby and Lystra, and behold a certain disciple there named Timotheus, the son of a certain woman, which was a Jew, right, and believed, but his father was a Greek. Now, most of us think just because you see the word Greek there, that his father was a Greek. But you have to understand that what? The man carries the seed. You are what your father is. So when I was reading in the first chapter of the book of First Maccabees, you have to understand that what his father, his father took on. He was living amongst the Greeks, and he had took on the Greek culture. You know what I'm saying? So this is how, this is why uh, scripture. When you go to the 16th chapter of the book of Acts, when you look at the term Greek, you have to understand that th- those are the same people. So let me read that again. It says. Then came he to Derby and Lystra, and behold, a certain disciple was there named Timotheus, the son of a certain woman, which was uh, a Jew and believed, but his father was a Greek, which was well reported about the brethren that were at Lystra and Iconia. Him was Shaul have to go forth with him and took and circumcised him because Judah, which were in those quarters, for they knew all that his father was a Greek. Now let's turn uh, to uh, what's that? Second Maccabees, real quick. Second Maccabees, the sixth chapter, and I'm gonna read verses six through nine, real quick. All right, this is Second Maccabees, the sixth chapter, verses six through nine. Neither was it lawful for a man to keep Sabbath. See, under 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 the king Antiochus, it was not lawful for Judah to maintain their feast days, you know what I'm saying, or their Sabbaths, because they was under the rulership of who? Under the Greeks. Neither was it lawful for a man to keep Sabbath day Sabbath days or ancient feasts or to profess himself at all to be a uh to be of Judah or what they would say a Jew. In the day of the king's birth every month there were brought by bitter constraint of of the sacrifice when the feast of Bacchus was kept. So what is the feast the feast of Bacchus? The feast of Bacchus is what? It's a heathenistic custom. You know what I'm saying? That's what it was was kept, Judah were compelled to go in and possess to Bacchus carrying ivy. Moreover, 
that went out a decree to the neighbor, uh, neighbor cities of the heathens by the subjection of the Ptolemy against Judah, that they shall observe the same fashion and be partakers of their sacrifices. And whosoever will not conform themselves to the manner of the Gentiles, meaning that the other nation should be put to death, then might a man have seen the present mis- uh, misery. So this is what was taking place amongst those people. They was not allowed to keep their customs and tradition because why? They started to follow after the decree of the Greeks. So when we, when we go back to the 16th chapter of the book of Acts, and it's talking about his father was a Greek. Actually, his father wasn't a Greek. He was he was living amongst the Greeks, and he had took on their culture. Because let's continue to read third verse, 16th chapter of the book of Acts, third verse. Him will Paul have to go forth with him and took and circumcised him because of Judah that was that were that were in those quarters for they knew all that he was a Greek. Why did he have to do that? It's because Judah wasn't allowed to circumcise their kids. That's why. So a lot of lot of lot of people are are, are saying that Timotheus was a um that he was a, that his father was a Greek and his mother was a, a Jew. That that that's misinterpretation. That that's misinterpretation of scripture is because why you have to go back to the history to that to really have a, a clear understanding on who those Greeks were that the nation of Israel was going back and forth with in the starting at the sixth chapter of the book of Acts. So let's look at another scripture real quick. Let's turn to Acts, the 22nd chapter. This is Paul, right? 22nd, 25 through 30. So it says, Acts, 25th chapter, 25 through 30. I don't even think I'm going to read all the way down there. It says, and as they bound him with thongs, Shaul said unto the centurion that stood back, is it lawful for you to scourge a man that is a Roman? Uncondemned. So this is Paul referring to himself as a as a Roman. Why is he saying that? It's because of the persecution that he was going to get from the Sadducees and the Pharisees because he was preaching the gospel of the kingdom. You know what I'm saying? And they had a problem with anybody that was teaching the gospel that Yahshua came forth with. So this is him referring to himself as a Roman, but. Most Christians, uh, they would say that they, well, I, don't, I haven't heard a whole lot of them say this, but I heard some say that Paul's father was a Roman. You know what I'm saying? But that's incorrect, and we're going to prove all things. And it says, when the centurion heard that, he went and told the chief captain, saying, take heed that thou doest, for this man is a Roman. And it says, then the chief captains came and said unto him, tell me, are thou, are thou, hold on one second, 26. When the centurion heard that, he went and told the chief captain, saying, take heed that thou, that thou doest, for this man is a Roman. And it says, then the chief captains came and said unto him, tell me, are thou a Roman? And he said, yea. So this is Paul saying that what? He was a Roman, but he's not saying that in terms of nationality. He's saying that in terms of what? A Roman citizen is because his father was a Roman citizen. And it says, then the chief captains came and said unto him, tell me, are thou a Roman? He said, yea. And the chief captains answered with a great song, obtain I this freedom. And Paul said, but I was free born. So this is Paul referring to himself as a Roman. But let's see what Acts, the 11th chapter says. This is, this is Paul speaking. You know what I'm saying? This is, matter of fact, Romans. Romans, the 11th chapter. Romans. 
the 11th chapter. Because Paul was what? He was a Pharisee of the Pharisee. He was a master. He was a master in dealing with the law. This is Paul, the 11th chapter of the book of Romans, the first verse. I say then, have El cast away his people? El forbid. For I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham of the tribe of Benjamin. So like according to Numbers, the first chapter in the 18th verse, all of the Israelites that was assembled, they was assembled by what? The pedigree of their fathers. So how could Paul be a half-breed or a mixed, you know what I'm saying? And he's saying to himself that he was from what? The tribe of Benjamin. This is, this is Paul saying this just as well. So let's look at something real quick. Try to see which one I'm going to deal with. All right. Let's turn to the, let's turn to, we're going to be dealing with Ephraim, strangers, and Gentiles, right? So let's turn to First Kings, first chapter, or First Kings, no, the 11th chapter of the book of Kings. 11th chapter of the book of Kings, because we're going to deal with how ten tribes became strangers just as well. All right, 11th chapter of the book of Kings, and we're going to start dealing with what? The 34th, the 34th, hold on a second, 11th chapter, verses 34 through 40. And by the way, family, if you have any questions or comments, you know that number, 319 527 Six two three nine. I see we have a lot of people on the phone lines checking out the show. Uh, like I always tell you, take down some notes, and if you have any questions, feel free to press number one, and we'll add you in the conversation. Continue. All right, this is the eleventh chapter of the book of First Kings, and I'm gonna start at the thirty fourth verse. It says, "How be it? I will not take the whole kingdom out of the hand out of out of his hand." Talking about who? Solomon. Because Solomon started to deal with what you call strange wives. So this is the most high chastising Solomon because even though Solomon was a great king, he started to take on what? He started marrying strange wives and started to take on their culture. So it says, how be it? I will not take the whole kingdom out of the hand, out of his hand, but I will make it, make him prince all the days of his life. To, for Dawi, my my servant's sake, whom I have chose because he kept my commandments and my statutes, but I will take the kingdom out of his hands and will give it unto thee, even ten tribes. Who is that talking about? It's talking about Jeroboam, you know. So it says, and unto his son will I give one tribe that Dawi, my son, may have light always before me in Jerusalem, the city which I have chosen me to put my name there. Why is he, uh, because David was the king, he was the king over all 12 tribes. You know what I'm saying? So when Solomon rebelled against the creator, the Most High left Judah as a light to what? All of the nations. It's because it's Judah that that's the one that's going to uh, resurrect all the nations that scatter. So it says, and I will take thee, and thou shalt reign according to all that that thy soul desire, and shall be king over Israel. And this shall be, if thou wilt hearken unto all that I command thee, and will walk in my ways, and do that is right in my sight to keep my statutes, and my commandment, as thou we, my servant, did, I will be with thee and build thee a sure house, as I built for thou we, and will give Israel unto thee. 
So this this is talking about who? This is talking about Jeroboam. Because once David rebelled against the Most High, it was a split between the kingdoms. And it says, I will for this afflict the seed of David, but not forever. So let's look at another. Uh, let's look at another. This is um, First Kings, the twelfth chapter, and the fifteenth and the sixteenth verse. Wherefore, twelfth chapter, First uh, Kings, fifteen to sixteen. Wherefore, king, wherefore the king hearkened not unto the people, for the cause was from Yah. That he might perform his saying, which Yah spake to Ahia the Shilonite unto Jeroboam, the son of Nebat. Now, when all Israel saw the king hearken not unto them, the people answered the king, saying, What portion have we in thy weed? Neither have we inherited in the son of Jesse. For your tents, Israel, now see to thy own house. David, so Israel departed unto their tents. So why 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 is this scripture so important? Because you had Jeroboam and them. They was trying to they was trying to have peace with Judah under Rehoboam, and Rehoboam and them neglected Judah because what well, of the of the crafty council. Of the young elders that was in that was in uh, that was in Judah, is because he went to the older elders at first, and then the older elders told them, "If you treat Israel right, that what they'll follow you." But the younger elders told them what that Solomon made the yoke tight amongst uh, Israel, and he's going that that. Uh, Rare bone should make the yoke tighter. So he hearkened until the younger council of the elders. You know what I'm saying? So this is this is why they asking him, what portion do we have in David? You know what I'm saying? It's because they still wanted to do what? They still wanted to worship at Jerusalem. But because Solomon had rebelled against the creator, he did what? He tried to kill Jeroboam. You know what I'm saying? Later on. I think it's in the 40th verse of the 11th chapter of the book of First Kings. So it was a rift between them. So what are they not? They're not keeping the law. It's because you're supposed to love thy brother as thyself, and you're not supposed to sacrifice unto false God. So the 19th verse, so Israel rebelled against the house of David unto this day, 23, 23 through 33. Matter of fact, that is Read that. Speak unto Rehoboam, the son of Solomon, king of Judah, and unto all the house of Judah and Benjamin, and to the remnant of the people, saying, Thus saith Yah, ye shall not go up nor fight against your brethren, the children of Israel. Return every man to his house, for this thing is from me. They hearken therefore to the word of Yah and return to depart according to the word of Yah. So these individuals to uh the southern and the northern kingdom, they, they was, it's infighting amongst them because what? Over power and authority. So it says, 25, then Jeroboam built Shechem and Mount Ephraim and dwelt therein and went out from thence and built Penuel. And Jeroboam said in his heart, now shall the kingdom return to the house of Dawid. If this people go up to sacrifice uh, in the house of uh, in the house of Yah at Jerusalem, then shall the heart of his people turn against unto their master, unto Rehoboam, uh, king of Judah, and they shall kill me, and go to Rehoboam, king of Judah. Whereupon the king took counsel and made two calves of gold, and said unto them. It is too much for you to go up to Jerusalem. Behold, thy powers, O Israel, were brought, brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. So what's going on here? We see that Jeroboam is committing what you call spiritual hoarding in Israel. 
See, the Creator said, if you if you will hearken unto my law, statutes, and commandments, that what I'm going I'm going to be with you. But Jeroboam is doing what? He's rebelling against divine order. So let's let's look at something real quick. Let's turn to Second King. I mean Second Chronicles, uh, the eleventh chapter of the Second Chronicles, real quick. Second Chronicles. Matter of fact, matter of fact, let's turn to Zechariah. Zechariah, the eleventh chapter. Zechariah, the eleventh chapter. Verses 14 It says Then I cut a, It says Then I cut asunder My other staff Even bands That I might break the brotherhood Between Judah and Israel So Judah and Israel They're what? They're a split nation You know what I'm saying? You got the southern and the northern kingdom And they had beef with one another So let's look at First Kings, matter of fact, let's let's look at First Kings, no, Second Chronicles, the eleventh chapter. Second Chronicles, the eleventh chapter. Second Chronicles, the eleventh chapter, fourteen through seventeen. For the Levites left their suburbs because I'm gonna just read it. For the Levites left their suburbs and possession and came to Judah. And Jerusalem for Jeroboam and his sons cast them off from executing the priest's offering unto Yah. Why did he do that? Because once he started to practice false religion, a false, a false way of life, he did, <coughs> he didn't allow the Levites to become high priests. He threw them away. You know what I'm saying? He 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 didn't even he he got some guys. He just got anybody to become the high priest. So the Levites left uh, Jeroboam, and this is them coming to who? Judah. So it says, for the Levites left their suburbs and their possessions and came to Judah and Jerusalem. For Jeroboam and his sons cast them off from executing the priest's office unto Yah. And he ordained him priests for the high places, for the devils, and for the calves, calves, which he had made. So he had ordained his own high priest instead of the Levites. This is why the Levites end up doing what? Getting away from uh, Jeroboam. And after them, out of all the tribes of Israel, such as set their hearts to seek Yah of Israel, came to Jerusalem to sacrifice unto Yah their power of their fathers. So they strengthened the kingdom of Judah and made Rehoboam, the son of Solomon, strong three years. For three years they walked in the way of Dawi and Solomon. So we see that what? The Levites is coming to Judah. So it says, let's look at another scripture real quick. Let's turn to the 17th chapter of the book of First Kings. 17th chapter of the book 17th chapter of the book Of 2nd Kings Excuse me Because we're going to talk about how Judah Went into captivity under the Assyrians So it says The 17th chapter Of the book Of 1st Kings 1 through 6 And the king of Assyria <coughs> Found conspiracy In Hoshea for he had sent messengers to to so king of Egypt and brought no present to the king of Assyria, as he had done year by year. Therefore the king of Assyria shut him up and bound him in prison. Then the king of Assyria came up throughout all the land and went up to Samaria and besieged it three years, because the land of Samaria the capital of Ephraim was the land of Samaria. That was that was they uh that was their headquarters. So it says in the ninth year of Hoshea, the king of Assyria took Samaria and carried Israel away into Assyria and placed them in Hala and Haba by the river of Gozan in the cities of the Medes. So 
we see that the Assyrians took Israel under the influence of the Creator. They took the ten tribes out of their land under the captivity under the Assyrians, and now the Assyrians, he, they put them in different cities uh, of the land of the Medes. So this is where they was at. So it says what? What verse we going to now? Matter of fact, let's 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 go over to the twenty fourth verse. It says, And the king of Assyria brought men from Babylon, from Kothar, and from Afar, and from Hamath, and from uh Shevarim, and placed them in the cities of Samaria instead of the children of Israel. And they possessed Samaria and dwelt in their cities, and dwelt in the cities thereof. And so it was the beginning of their dwelling there, that they feared not Yah. Therefore, Yah sent lions amongst them, which slew some of them. Wherefore, they spake to the king of Assyria, saying, The nations which thou hast removed placed in the cities of Samaria, Know not the manner of Elohim of the land. Therefore he sent lions amongst them, and behold, they slay them because they know not the manner of Yah of the land. Then the king of Assyria commanded, saying, Carry thither one of the priests whom ye brought from thence. Let them go and dwell there, and let him teach them the manner of Yah of the land. So this is the king of Assyria. He 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 took Israel out of their land, and then they brought in heathens, but they had to bring in high priests in order to teach them how to live in the land. But let's continue to read. 28. Then one of the priests whom they had carried away from Samaria came and dwelt in Bethel and taught them how they should fear Yah. How be it, every man made powers of their own and put them in the houses of the high places which the Sumerians had made. Every nation in their cities where they dwelt, and the man of Babylon made Sukkot, Benoth, and the man of Kuth made Nogal, and the man of Hamath made Ashima, and the Avites made uh, Nibhaz and Tartak, and Shevarites burnt their children in the fire of Adrimelech and uh, Anemelech, the gods of Shevarim. They feared, so they feared Yah, and made unto themselves of the lords of them priests of the high places with sacrifice for them and the houses of high places. They fear Yah and serve their own God. So the Creator allowed these heathens to live in the land, but what? They was allowed to practice their own way of life in the land. You know what I'm saying? And who that sound like today? It's the it's the Jews that's over there today masquerading as the nation of Israel, see? Because what do they do? They practice homosexuality in the land. What else they do? They practice the Kabbalah. That has nothing to do with Israel's history. So these people have taken on Israel's history, culture, but they still maintain their own culture. So it says, 33 again, they feared Yah and served their own powers after the manner of nations whom they carried away from thence unto this day. They do after the four manners. They fear not Yah, neither do they after their statutes or their ordinances after the law and commandments which Yah commanded the children of Yahweh, whom he named Israel. So what it's saying? It's saying that even though the nations were li- living over there, they don't fear the Creator. You know what I'm saying? They know about the they know about Israel way of life, but they don't fear the Creator because they still practice their own customs. So it says what? Let's turn to Second Kings, the seventeenth chapter. Matter of fact, I'm gonna go to the fifteenth chapter of Second Kings. 
real quick. 15th chapter of the book of 2 Kings, and I'm going to read 27 through 31. And it says, In the day, two and fifth, it said, In the two and fiftieth year of Azariah, king of Judah, Pekah, uh, the son of Ramalia, began to reign over Israel and Samaria. This before they even got taken out the land. I just had to go back to uh, make a quick point. And reign 12, uh, 20 years. And he did which was evil in the sight of Yah. He departed not from the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, who made Israel to sin. In those days, Pekah, king of Israel, came to to Glaub Pilsla, king of Assyria, and took Ijon and Abu Beth Makkah and Yanoah, Kadesh and Hazar and Gilead and Galilee, all the land of Naphtali, and carried them captive to Assyria. And Hoshea, the son of Eli, made a conspiracy against Pekah, the son of Romalia, and smote him and slew him and reigned in his stead. And the twentieth in the twentieth uh, year of Yotham, the son of Uzziah, the rest of the acts of Pekiah, and all he did, behold, they are written in the books of the chronicles of the kings of Israel. So we see that what? Israel, they're not following after the law, statutes, and the commandments of the Creator. This is why they were taken out of the land, and they was what? They was replaced by heathen. Let's look at something. Let's turn to the book of Hosea, the first chapter. Because this is what the creator says. This is what the creator does to the nation of Israel when they're not following after his customs and traditions. Hold on one second. Book of Hosea. Book of Hosea. I'm going to turn to the first chapter, and I'm going to deal the first chapter of the book of Hosea, verses 6 through 9. And it says, Hosea, the first chapter, verses 6 through 9. And she conceived again and bare a daughter. And El said unto him, Call her name Laruhamah, for I will where I will no more have mercy upon the house of Israel, but I will utterly take them away. But I will have mercy upon the house of Judah, and will have, and will have, and will save them by Yah their El, will not save them by bow, nor by sword, nor by battle, by horses, nor by ho- uh, horses. A verse. Now when she had wings. Laruama, she conceived again, bare a son. Then said, Yah, call his name Loami, for ye are not my people, and I will not be your God. So when the Creator is saying that, that means that what? He has given you a way over to these strange nations. You know what I'm saying? The Creator is no, no longer dealing with you as a nation of people, so now what are you? You are considered what you will call a Gentile, and Gentile only means what? Other nations. You have taken on the philosophy of the Greeks. You have taken on the philosophy of the Romans. You have taken on the philosophy of the of the Assyrian. Any nation that you find yourself in, you will become just like these other nations. One scripture, Deuteronomy the twenty eighth chapter, verses thirty two. 36 and 37 Real quick Deuteronomy 28 chapter Verses 36 and 37 And Yah shall bring thee in thy kings Which thou shalt set over thee Unto a nation Which neither thou nor thy fathers Have known And there thou shalt serve Of the power wood and stone And thou shalt become an astonishment A proverb and a byword Meaning that what They're not going to call you uh, Israel no more you're going to start taking on the philosophy and the thought pattern of these other nations. So 
it says, and the Bible among all nations where the God shall lead thee. So this is what this is what's taking place with the house of Israel, the southern and the northern kingdom, when they what? When they took on the mentality of these other nations. So let's look at something real quick. Let's turn to the fifth chapter of the book of Hosea. And I'm gonna be dealing with a couple of verses in the fifth chapter of the book of Hosea, 14 and 15. It says, For I will be unto Ephraim as a lion, and as a young lion, the house of Judah, I, even I, will tear and go away. I will take away, and none shall rescue him. I will go and return to my place till they acknowledge their offense. And seek my face In their affliction They will seek me early So when it's, it's talking about the creator Going to go to his uh, Own place Meaning that what He's not going to be dealing with the nation of Israel As as a nation Anymore He's going to throw them away Towards who Towards the heathens So this is how The nation of Israel Became what you call Gentile man. So let's look at something real quick. Let's look at something real quick. To Isaiah, the 56th chapter. Isaiah, 56th chapter. Isaiah, the 56th chapter. And I'm going to be dealing with verses 2 through 6. Blessed is the man that doeth this, and the son of man that lives. Isaiah, the, what chapter is that? 56 chapter 2 through 6. Blessed is the man that doeth this, and the son of man that lives hold on it, that keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it, and keep his hand from doing any evil. Neither let the son of the stranger that have joined himself to Yah speak, saying, Yah had utterly separated me from his people. Neither let the eunuch say, Behold, I am a dry tree. So why is he why why is he calling the terminology here of strangers? What is that talking about? It's talking about how the nation of Israel had become what? Strangers amongst these nations. See, when we're talking about strangers, it's not just talking about the other nations. It's talking about the nation of Israel just as well. See, they have became eunuchs. They have taken on the philosophy of these other nations. So it says for the fourth verse, for thus saith Yah unto unto the eunuchs that keep my Sabbath and choose the things that please me, and take hold of my covenant. Even unto them will I give a name, house, and within my walls a place, and a name better than of, of sons and of daughters. I will give them an everlasting name that shall not be cut off. Also the sons of the strangers that join themselves to Yah, to serve him and to love the name of Yah, to be his servant, Every one that keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it and take a hold of my covenant. So we're gonna to go to another scripture. Let's turn to Revelations the twenty first chapter. Revelations the twenty first chapter. Revelations, the 21st chapter, verses 10 through 12. And it says, He carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me that great city, the holy the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from hell. So this is John having a what? Revelation about the city of the city of Jerusalem being rebuilt. So it said, having the glory of Yah and her light was like unto a stone most precious, even like a jasper stone clear as crystal. 
and had a wall great and high and had 12 gates and at the gates 12 angels and a name written thereof, uh, thereon which are the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. Let's look at another scripture. Let's turn to First Peter, the first chapter, 1 through 2. Because now we're going to talk about who the Gentiles were. See, the Gentiles were the dispersed of what? Of the house of Israel, the southern and the northern kingdom. That that's that's who the that's that's who the dispersed were. Because you had certain Judites that that fell away from the Creator just as well. It says, First uh, Peter verses, First Peter first chapter verses one through two, and it says, Peter and the apostle of Yahshua Hamashiach to the strangers scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia. Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia, elect according to the foreknowledge of Elohim the Father through the sanctuary of the Spirit unto unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Yahshua HaMashiach, grace unto you and peace be multiplied. So when it's talking about sprinkling of the blood and things of this nature, it's talking about what? Symbolic of when Yahshua came on the scene, he gave the nation nation of Israel Yah's spirit so they can be able to walk after the Creator in righteousness. Let's let's look at something. Isaiah forty five and four. Isaiah forty five and four. Isaiah forty five. And four Isaiah forty five and four, so Yaakov my ser Yah for Yaakov my servant's sake and Israel my elect, I have even called. I have even called thee by thy name. I have surnamed thee, though thou hast not known me. So how 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 has they not known the Creator? It's because they stopped following after the Creator. That's why. That's how they didn't know him. So it says what? It says what? We're gonna to go to Second Peter verses seven through twenty. I may not even have to read all the way down. Let's turn to Second Peter verses seven through twenty. It says Second Peter, the second chapter, verses seven through twenty. It says and delivered, it says, and delivered just lot, vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. For that righteous man dwelling among them in sin and hearing vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. Yah knoweth how to deliver the, the godly out of temptation and to reserve the unjust to the day of judgment to be punished. But chief, but chiefly them that walk after the flesh in the lust of uncleanliness, and despise government presumptuous are they self will. They are not afraid to speak evil of dignities, whereas angels, which are greater in power and might, bring not railing accusation against against them before Yah. But these a natural brute beast made to be taken and destroyed, speak evil of the things that they understand not, and shall utterly perish in their own corruption, and shall receive the reward of righteousness as they that counted uh, pleasure to write in the daytime. They are not blemished, sporting themselves with their own deceiving while they cease. See? So it says, 14 verse having eyes full of adultery and that cannot cease from sin, beguiling unstable souls and heart have ex- ex- exercised with covenant practice- practices cursed children. So it says the 15th verse, which have forsaken the right way and are gone 
following the way of Bela, the son of Bozor, who loved the ways of unrighteousness, but was rebuked for his iniquity, the dumb ass speaking with man's voice forbade the mass madness of the prophets. These are wells without water, clouds are carried with tempests to whom the mist of darkness is reserved forever. So it says, for when they speak great swelling words and vanity, they are lured through a lust of their flesh through much wantonness, those that will clean escape from them who live in error. Let's look at something real quick. Second, second uh, Peter, the first chapter, because I want to make a quick point real quick. Matter of fact, in fact, let's do something real quick. Let's turn to the book, the book of Matthews, the fourth chapter. And let's see who the Mashiach was dealing with when he was going to Galilee. All right. This is the fourth chapter of the book of Matthew, starting from verses 12. Now, when Yahshua had heard that John was cast into prison, he departed into Galilee. And leaving Nazareth, he came and dwelt in Capernaum, which is upon the seacoast in the borders of Zebulon and Naphtali, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, the land of Zebulon and the land of Naphtali by the way of the sea, beyond Jordan, Galilee of who? Gentiles. And it says, the people which sat in darkness saw great light, and to them which sat in the region in the shadow of death, light sprung up. From that time, Yahshua began to preach to say, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So let's look at a quick scripture. Let's turn to Isaiah, the 42nd chapter. Isaiah, 42nd chapter, verses 6. Isaiah, the 42nd chapter, verses 6 through 7. Isaiah, the 42nd chapter, Verses 6 through 7. It says, I, Yah, have called thee in righteousness and will hold thy hand and will keep thee and will give thee a covenant of the people for a light of the Gentiles. So when most people look at this scripture, they will think that it's talking about the other nations. So the seventh verse says what? To open the blind eyes to show to bring out the prisoners from the prison and them that sit in darkness out of the prison houses. So let's let's look at another scripture. Let's turn to Isaiah the ninth chapter verses one through two. It says Isaiah the ninth chapter verses one through two. Nevertheless dimness shall not be such as was in her vexation. When at first he lightly afflicted the land of Zebulon and the land of Naphtali, and afterward did more grievously afflict her by the way of the sea beyond Jordan and Galilee of the nations. The people that walk in darkness have seen a great light, that they, they that dwell in the land of the shadow of death, upon them have light shine. So when we when you look at the word Gentile, you have to understand that this is what? This is the northern kingdom have what they have taken on the philosophy of the Gentiles. They have become because what? They start following after false customs and false traditions. This is what they have done. You know what I'm saying? So when you look at the 12th chapter of the book, the 4th chapter of the book of Matthew's verses 
12 all the way down to 17, when it's talking about Gentiles, it tells you who the Gentiles was. It was what? The tribe of Ephraim and the tribe of what? Zebulon. So let's look at another scripture real quick. Let's look at the book of, let's look at the book of James, the first chapter. says the book of James, the first chapter, verses 1. It says, James, the servant of El, of the master Yahshua HaMashiach, to the twelve tribes which were scattered abroad, greeting, my brethren, count it all joy when ye fall in diverse temptations. So we see that what? That James, right, he was a, he was an Israelite, and when it's talking about scattered abroad, it's talking about what the lost sheep of the house of Israel. It's because Yahshua and them had to go to Judah first, and Judah rejected them, so that they had to do what they had to go to deal with the other tribes that was scattered abroad just as well that had taken on the Gentile philosophy just as well. So. Let's look at another scripture real quick. Let's turn to uh, let's turn to Luke. Turn to Luke. The first chapter, seventy-seven verse. Book of Luke. First chapter, the 77 verse through 79. All right. The book of Luke, the first chapter, 77 verse. And it says, to give knowledge of salvation unto his people by the remission of their sins through the tender mercy of of our power whereby they uh whereby the day spring from high have visited us to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death to guide out our feet in the way of peace. So who was the ones that was sitting in what? In the shadow of death that didn't have no light. It was the nation of Israel that didn't have no light. Let's let's go back to Zechariah the twelfth chapter and the seventh verse. Zechariah the twelfth chapter and the seventh verse. It says, Yah also shall save the tents of Judah first, that the glory of the house of Dawi and the glory of his inhabitants of Jerusalem do not magnify themselves against Judah. So what is this scripture talking about? If Yahshua and them would have went to the ten tribes first, then what? They would have magnified themselves above who? Above Judah. So they had to do everything in decent and in orderly. He had to go to Judah first, and then later on, they went to the dispersed of what? The ten tribes second. It's because Judah had rejected um, the ordinances of the creator. See, they wasn't following the customs and the traditions of the creator. They were following what you call the Greco-Roman Empire. Let's look at another scripture. Let's turn to Romans, the 15th chapter, and I believe it's the 8th verse. Romans, the 15th chapter and the 8th verse. Now, I say that Yahshua was a minister of the circumcision. So who was the circumcision? It was what? The house of David. They was considered the circumcision is because why? The Most High had left the light unto the house of David. So they was considered the circumcision. 
for the truth of El to confirm the promises unto the fatherless. You know what I'm saying? So it says what? Let's turn to, uh, let's look at another scripture real quick. Let's look at Acts, the 13th chapter. The 13th chapter, verses 45 through 52. It says, Acts, the 13th chapter, verse, I'm going to start at the 44th verse. And it says, and the next day, I mean, and the next Sabbath day came almost the whole city together to hear the word of Yah. But when Judah saw the multitudes, they were filled with envy and spake against those things which were spoken by Shaul, contradicting, contradicting and blaspheming. Then Shaul and Barnabas waxed bold and said, it was necessary that the word of Yah should first have been spoken to you. Talking about who? Judah. But seeing ye put it from you and judge and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life, lo, we turn to the Gentiles. Now, when most people see this, they they thinking and they mad that it's talking about what? That Paul is going to deal with the other nation. But the forty seventh chapter, uh forty second uh forty seventh verse says, For so have the master commanded us, saying, I have set thee to be a light of the Gentiles, that thou shouldest be for the salvation unto the end of the earth. And when the Gentiles heard this, they were glad and glorified the word of Yah, and as many as were ordained to eternal life, believed. And the word of Yah was published throughout all the region. It says, but Judah stirred up the devout and honorable women and the chief men of the city and raised persecution against Shaul and Barnabas and expelled them out of their coast. But they shook off the dust of their feet against them and came unto Iconium. And the disciples were filled with joy with the Holy Spirit. So when it's talking about that, when it's talking about Gentile, it's not talking about the other nations. It's talking about the same people that have taken on the philosophy and the teaching of these other nations. So let's look at another scripture real quick. Let's turn to Acts, the third chapter, 25 through 26. Let's see what they got to say. Third chapter, verses 25 through 26. And it says, Ye are the children of the of the prophet and of the covenant which El made with our father, saying unto Abraham, And thy seed shall the kindreds of the earth be blessed. Unto you first El has raised up his son, Yahshua, sent him to bless you, and turning away every one of you from your iniquity. So iniquity is what? It's the transgression of the law. So when we're looking at this situation, we have to understand that the Most High was not sent to the other nations. He was sent to the dispersed of the house of Israel and the house of uh, the southern and the northern kingdom. So... I'm trying to look for this other scripture that I had dealt with before. One second. All right, while you're looking for that scripture, as well as the audience know, again, that number to call in is 319-527-6239. Again, I see we have people on the phone lines. If you have any questions, you're new to the show, simply press number one, and that lets me know that you have a question or a comment in regards to this particular lesson. Uh, today's lesson is entitled, How Did Israel Become Gentiles? How did Israel become Gentiles? Special guest is Yeshua ben Yisrael. Again, that number to call in is 319 
Then once you call in, you got to press number one, and I'll add you in a conversation. I do see two social media questions, uh, so whenever you're ready, I can read them to you. Let's go ahead. Uh, I'm ready. Let's go. All right. The first question is, when it comes to the title of this class, are you referring to the Israelites that are in the land today or those of us that's abroad? I, I believe you addressed this issue earlier, but maybe they caught the middle of the show, but you can address it again. Right. Oh, okay. Uh, well, I'm not referring to the Israelites that's in the land now. It's because the, 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 the people that's in the land now are not the real Israelites. You know what I'm saying? Those, those people does not, they don't even fit prophecy. You know what I'm saying? So those people are the same folks. They're not the same folks, but they're the nation that have came into the land and have taken on Israel's history. But what they do is what? They're still following after their false customs and traditions because you cannot find nowhere in the Bible where the nation of Israel dealt with the Kabbalah. And see, according to the 14th chapter, uh, Matter of fact, let's get that real quick before we even go to the scripture that I was going to read. Let's look at something real quick because we're going to be dealing with something. Okay. This is the second chapter of the book of Isaiah. That's what I want. The second chapter of the book of Isaiah, verses 2. And it says, It shall come to pass in the last days that the mountains of Yah's house shall be established in the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above hills, and all nations shall flow unto it. So and now it says in the last days, when the Creator bring the nation of Israel back in their land, then they're going to do what? They're going to set up the kingdom. Now, check what the third verse says. And many people shall go and say, Come ye, let us go up to the mountain of Yah, to the house of El, to Yahakob, and he will teach us his ways, and we will walk in his path. For out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of Yah from Jerusalem. So now we see that Israel is setting up the kingdom, right? A righteous government that is going to be head up by the Creator, and that. All the people, the other nations, they're going to come amongst the nation of Israel, and they're going to learn how to serve the creator in righteousness. So this prophecy has to be going on right now. If the people of the land are in the – if those Jews are the rightful owners of the land, then they have to do what? They have to fulfill prophecy. Let's look at the fourth verse. And he shall judge among the nations and shall rebuke, meaning what? Correct. Many people, they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. Do we see that over there in the land today? No. The other nations, they're still fighting after, they still fighting against the Jews. So this this prophecy in the second chapter, it really smashes the whole ideology that the that the rightful people are in the land. So what am I what am I talking about? I'm talking about the nation of Israel, the true nation of Israel that has been dispersed. They not in their land today. Because if they was in their land today, then these prophecies will be fulfilled. So I hope that I answered your question. What is the second question? All right, we'll read the second question. But once again, that number is 319-527-6239. You can send me an email, family, at debatetalkview at gmail.com. That's debatetalk, number four, letter U, at gmail.com. If you, you know don't want to call in, but you want to still send me a question. All right, let me read this one to you. It says, <clears throat> those individuals that follow this lesson live and are asking themselves, how does this relate to the Hebrew Israelites of today? What would you say? Are you saying all of us are taking on the ways of the Gentiles? Are you saying that there's a percentage of black Hebrew Israelites that's not following the ways of the Gentiles? Give us some clarity. Um, 
Well, to answer that question is that when I made the statement that those people following Gentile customs and tradition and how it re- relates to today, you have a great percentage of our people that are still following after the customs and tradition of the Gentiles. You know what I'm saying? Meaning, what do I mean by that? The other nations. Because Israel is not just scattered in America. We scattered throughout the four winds. See, when you calling yourself an American or African American, you have taken on the thoughts and the ideas of these Gentiles. When you practicing Christmas, Easter, and all these different abominable pagan holidays, you have taken on the philosophy of the Gentiles. You know what I'm saying? So the ones that the Creator is resurrecting, uh, we're the ones that's trying to stand on righteousness to the best of our ability. You know what I'm saying? In terms of trying to follow the Creator and do what He said that we need to do. Because let me read this scripture. This is Leviticus, the 26th chapter, 40th verse. It says, Leviticus, the 20th chapter, and the 40th verse, it says, If they shall confess their iniquity, meaning what? Their sin. Who is that talking about? It's talking about the nation of Israel and the iniquity of their fathers with their trespass, which they trespass against me, and that also they have walked contrary unto me, and that I have walked contrary unto them, and have brought them into the land of their enemies. If then their uncircumcised heart be humble, and they then accept the punishment of their iniquity, then I will remember my covenant with Yaakov, and also my covenant with Yisak, and also my covenant with Abraham, I will remember, and I will remember the land. See, this is what the Creator is saying. See, this is what we're doing today. By the Creator resurrecting us, what? Spiritual, to understand who we are from a nationalistic standpoint of view. The Bible itself does not, uh, the Jews of today does not fit no prophecy dealing with Israel in this Bible. Because why? The nation of Israel has to fit a certain type of condition even to this day. We are in the last days. The nation of Israel is not in their land. It's because if they was in their land, according to uh, Isaiah, the 14th chapter, in the second verse, it says what? That the creator shall possess the other nations as what? Servants and handmaids. When has, when has the Jews possess all these different nations that came against them as servants and handmaids. That's not going on today. They're fighting over there in the land. If they have the true God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, then why are they still using the United States government to fight their battles for them? See, they don't they don't they do not fit the conditions of the people of this Bible. When we're talking about Gentile minded, they have to be Gentile minded even to this day. And this is the creator doing what? Resurrecting the nation of Israel, the so called Negro dispersed throughout the four corners of the wind. They're the ones coming back into the knowledge of self. They're the ones that's doing that. But you have a great, a, a, a great uh, number of us that's still under the Gentile mindset. Because when you ask the so-called Negro what's his nationality, he can't tell you. He's going to call himself, a, if, he's in a, if he's dealing with a, a religious persuasion, he'll say that he's a Gentile, but he can't, he can't produce no history to do what? Identify himself with a certain, certain uh, particular people. So what is that? People that has been robbed and spoiled We're the only people that on the face of this planet That has been robbed and spoiled We're not in the table of nations When you look at us as a table A a nation of people We're not a nation of people So this Bible Is referring to us Because we have been scattered We have been destroyed From a nationalistic and a spiritual standpoint of view 
our ancestors, when they came over here as slaves, they was not allowed to transmit history down to their kids. So what's going to happen? They're going to forget it. So, like I said, I, I, I hope that I answer your question. So when I'm talking about Gentiles, we're talking about past, uh, we're talking about past and future because we're still dealing with that mindset even to this day. So let's look at, um, I want to look at a scripture real quick because I was trying to look for it. I couldn't find it at first. I'm back at the first chapter of the book of Hosea. The Yeah, the first chapter of the book of Hosea, and I'm going to be dealing with the ninth verse, just the ninth verse, and then I'm going to jot down the verses um, 10 and 11. It says, then said Elohim, call his uh, call his name Loami, for ye are not my people, and I will not be your power. So when the Creator said, when He said to the ten tribes that you're not my people, He wasn't dealing with those people anymore. So they started taking on the philosophy and the teachings of what of the Assyrians. This is what they were doing. But let's look at future tense because we have to look at this too. I'm back to the same question that the brother was saying is that we have to look at this situation too. If the nation of Israel is in their land today, then why 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 is all the tribes are not there? You only you only see uh you only see the people that refer to themselves as what? Jews and Levites. That's that's the only that that's the only people that's basically over there. So if the prophecy is being fulfilled, then all Israel will be in their land today. They are not in their land. So this says in the uh, 10th verse, it says, Yet the number of children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured nor numbered. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, Ye are not my people, it shall be said unto them, Ye are the sons of the living power. Then shall the children of Judah and the children of Israel be gathered together and appoint themselves one one head, which is what? The creator. And they shall come up out of uh out of the land out of the land for gr- for great shall be the day of Jezreel. So it says right here, future blessing of the restoration of Israel. Then shall the children of Judah and the children of Israel be gathered together because why? They were split. That's why. So the ninth verse says what? Call his name Loami, for ye are not my people, and I will not be your power. Let's look at first Peter, the second chapter, and let's 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 deal with the ninth verse. Because this is the scripture that I wanted. But ye are chosen, ye are the ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye shall show forth the praises to him who have called forth uh let me read that over. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priest priesthood and holy nation and procure your people that ye should sure forth the praises of him call you out of darkness. Who is that? That's that's the northern kingdom. And some of the dispersed of Judah. Because during the time of the Babylonians you had some certain of Israel that still wanted to live over there. So let's look at this. Into his marvelous light which in times past were not a people. What is that? That's Hosea, the first chapter and the ninth verse. But are now the people of El, which have not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. What is that? The 10th and the 11th verse of first uh, of the first chapter of the book of Hosea, because why? They was considered not the creator's people anymore, but the creator did what? He had mercy on them. And he did what? 
he declared them his people. Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, they ain't from fleshly lust, which war against the soul. Why is he saying that? It's because they had taken on the philosophy and the teachings of these other nations. Because if you're not following the creator, then what are you doing? You're going to be eating swine's flesh. You're going to be practicing the uh, traditions, following the, uh, the, the cultures and the traditions of the other nations. So this is what he's saying to them, that what? Uh, let me read the uh, 11th verse again. Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims as stain from freshly, uh, fleshly lust which war against the soul, having your conversation honest among the Gentiles. Why is that? What did he talk about when he said that you got to have your conversation Honest amongst the Gentiles, you have to take on the philosophy and the teaching of the Creator. That's how you're going to have your conversation honest amongst these other nations. Because according to Leviticus, the uh, 26th chapter and the 40th verse, it says what? If they acknowledge the sins of their forefathers, then what? Then the Creator will do what? He will remember them. And it says that whereas they speak against you as evildoers, they may by your good works, which they shall behold, glorify El in the day of uh, visitation. So when it's talking about Gentiles, it's talking about what? The dispersed of the nation of Israel. That That's what that's talking about. And we are still dispersed even to this day. All right, just to let you know, brother, you got another question, uh, Whenever you're ready for it, again, that number is 319-527-6239. If you call in, you got to press number one if you have any questions or comments, family. Again, that number to call in is 319-527-6239. Uh, let me know when you're ready for the question. I'm ready, sir. All right, let me go to I'm it. Ready. Uh, all right, it says, are Israelites in America still guilty of following the ways of the Gentiles? Many of us would say when you live in a foreign land, automatically you will have to adapt to some of the Gentile ways. Hebrew Israelites follow the Bible to the best of our capability. However, when we have to work for a corporation, that could be considered the way of the Gentiles. When we have to rely on a system for survival, it's considered following the Gentiles, etc., etc. You can answer that. And I agree with I agree with uh, so hardly is because. You know, this is like some of the some of the like issues that I may have with certain Israelite organization is that see we, we think that we can cap we, we think that we can keep the feast days in captivity. You can't do that. See? You can't do it. Because why? You have to be up under your own governmental structure in order to follow the creator uh one hundred and ten percent. Well, first of all, you have to have the creator spirit indwelling in you. This is what the nation of Israel failed to do. See, it's not it, the 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 uh the customs, the law statutes and the uh the law statutes and the commandments is none of void if you don't have Yah's spirit dwelling in you. So yes, we are still we are still following basically after the customs and the tradition of these nations because why? What if you have to go to work on the Shabbat? You're not in your own governmental structure. You may have to go to work. You know what I'm saying? Now, some people say, well, that that's when grace come in and things of this nature, but you're still breaking the laws because according to the book of Exodus, when Moses went to, the, uh, went to Pharaoh, he said what? Let my people go so that we can go into the wilderness so that the creator can reintroduce himself to the nation of Israel so we can start learning how to follow the creator in righteousness. So, yeah, we are still caught up in, in a lot of the Gentile philosophies and things of this nature because, why, you don't, get, you, don't, you don't break the shackles with a snap of the finger. You know what I'm saying? It takes what? It's a process in order to do this thing. So 
I I agree with the brother when he say that we still have to do certain things in this land and things of this nation. But but here's the thing though. In order for the nation of Israel to come out of captivity, we have to do what? We have to come together and we have to be under the influence of the creator. This is how we're going to come out of prison. You know what I'm saying? So I, I agree with the brother so hardly is that we're still in bondage, both physically and spiritually. It's because you don't come out of the matrix just like that. You have to learn how to master what you call the matrix, and this is what we're doing even to this day. So I hope I answered the brother's question the best way I can. Uh, that was a good question. I appreciate the family out there that's uh, sending in their questions. And we see people on the phone lines. I see some Skype callers as well. Uh, if you're calling in from Skype, you can also press number one, and that lets me know that you have a question or a comment. Again, the number is 319-527-6239. How did Israel become Gentiles? How did Israel become Gentiles? Uh, you know, following, you know, uh, you know, hearing your answer, so just going back to, you know, what you said, so is there anybody, like, really following uh, the way uh, righteously in the way that the Bible is supposed to, you know, we're supposed to do it as Hebrew Israelites, in your opinion? Because, again, once you, you know, as the brother said, you're coming in a foreign land, and some of the things you have to adapt to in order to survive, things of that nature. But in your opinion, is there anybody uh, following in a true way that you come and researched? That, oh, somebody uh, pressed number one. Uh, so I'm going to let him answer, but uh, we're going to get your question. Go ahead. Oh, no problem. You want me to respond? Yeah, you can respond to that, then we get the caller. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh me personally, uh I would say I would say yet again, I would say no that there's nobody really that's following the law, statutes and the commandments of the creator one hundred and ten percent. It's because why wow, we're still living in what you would call a strange land, you know. We're we're basically following the creator to the best of our ability. You know what I'm saying? See, when we, when you see people out on the street corners or you see people on Facebook or wherever you see them, when they're talking about we got to follow the law and things of this nation, uh, they understand that we're not following it to the best of our ability is because why? We're not up under our own governmental rule. That's why we're not doing it. You have to be up under your own governmental structure in order to do what? To be able to practice it 110%. And like I say, yet again, the first aspect of following that situation is that what? You have to uh, take on the creative spirit. And see, what we're dealing with today, we're dealing with what you call a process. This, this thing don't happen as a snap of a finger. You know what I'm saying? It's a process. And the most high is the one that put us in captivity, and he's the one that's going to bring us out of captivity. So, you know, in my opinion, it's none of us that's keeping the law, statutes, and the commandment 110%. It's because you have to be up under your own governmental structure in order to do that. Because what if you... Uh, a feast day come up, what if you have to go to work? You done broke the feast days, man. It's because you're going to work and everything is supposed to be shut down in that situation. So how can you how can you follow the feast days like your ancestors did? It's impossible. You know what I'm saying? But these are some of the things that you can follow in righteousness. You can deal with the moral aspect of the law in captivity, see, we don't have to engage in what you would call spiritual fornication or physical fornication. We don't have to serve other gods. We do that. Be, we do that because we choose to. You know what I'm saying? We don't have to commit homosexuality. We don't have to murder our brothers in the street. We don't have to do that. So these are some of the things I'm talking about. Conscious Israelites, but. But see, you have a lot of the Israelites that's unconscious. They are engaging in this type of stuff here. You know what I'm saying? So 
we talking about the conscious ones that understand who they are from a nationalistic standpoint of view. They don't have to uh, upheed to all these different philosophies and teachings that's being taught to us as a nation. You don't have to refer to yourself as an African-American, see? You don't have to engage in stealing from your brother. You don't have to do that. You don't have to practice pedophilia in, in the nation. You don't have to do that. Now, if you take on those type of mentality, you know what I'm saying, you got to do what? You have to repent. It's because repent is changing from one dispensation to the next. You have to take on the spirit and the characteristic of the creator. So I agree that in the land that we are dispersed to, we do have to, what's that? We do have to uh, maneuver and do certain things. But I'm talking about from a moral sense. We don't have to do certain things that the other nations are doing. See? It's because the mindset of these other nations is what? They it they carnal. The nations of today are deaf, dumb, and blind. If we're if we're calling ourselves the the, the natural and the spiritual seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, we have to first become a light to ourselves and become a light to the whole entire world is because the whole entire world is walking in darkness. So I hope that uh, I answer that question to the best of my ability. All right, we're going to get this caller. Uh, one more follow-up question before we get to this caller. Is there a penalty? Is there a penalty for not able, being able to follow all the traditions of Hebrew Israelites in the land, being that we're in a foreign land, is there a penalty? I would I would say me personally, I would say no, it's because you have to first you got to come up out of this system from a spiritual standpoint of view. When the nation of Israel came up out of Egypt, you had a lot of the Israelites First of all, they came together because as a nation, they understood that they was in bondage. They was in bondage as a nation. But when they came out of Egypt, all of them cats, they, man, they still had the Egyptian mindset. So when we have what you would call the second exodus out of this country, what's going to take place? We're going to have to go into the wilderness all over again. And this is when the creator is going to do what? He's going to separate what I would call the man from the boy. See, we're going to have to be retaught how to serve the creator in righteousness, man. So I'm not saying that you can do whatever you want in this situation, but see, right now the creator is in the process of doing what? Sealing his elect. That's what he's in the process of doing right now. So you're going to have to, right. it's going to come a time. You're going to have to come up out of this system. It's because you can't serve two masters, man. You can't serve two masters because why? You're going to hate one and you're going to love the other. So how in the world is we going to be a nation of people still living amongst these heathens, man? We got to come up out of this situation. And then according to Ezekiel the 20th chapter, it says that what? You're going to go into the wilderness, and then the creator is going to do what? He's going to introduce himself to the nation of Israel. And this is when the creator is going to do what? He's going to deal with what? The rebels. Because you have rebels amongst the nation of Israel just as well. Yeah, so, I apologize, uh, Yeshua. Let me jump in real quick because we only have like maybe 20 minutes or 30 minutes left in the air. Uh-huh. Let's get some of these callers. Wow. Again, that number is 319-527-6239. We appreciate the people out there that's interacting, listening to the show, sharing it on their personal pages, emailing, and, uh, you know, definitely uh, we appreciate the family out there. Let's go to the callers out there. If it's your first time calling in, we have a rule. There's no foul language. You got to keep it clean and keep it professional. Let's go to 563-210. You're live in there. Yeah, I wanted to ask the question, do you agree that uh, – Christians are just in the churches are uh, actually worshiping another God and not not the uh, son of God. 
Uh, yes, sir. I, I, I believe that they are following after another God. It's because when we came over here as slaves, Christianity was whipped into us. You know what I'm saying? And it also says that in the book of Deuteronomy that what? You're going to come into a strange land and you're going to be serving other gods, wood and stone. So America is one of those different situations, you know what I'm saying, in terms of Christianity. Yes, a lot of our people are calling on the false gods because, see, we're not following customs and traditions of our ancestors. Is because why? They don't need, they have been uh, blinded and they have been disconnected from their culture. If you don't know your culture and who you are, you can't practice your way of life. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of our people are blinded in a lot of these different religions, not just Christianity, Islam, and Judaism, because all three of those religions were created off of what? Israel's history. So a lot of our people thinking that they're serving the most high, but in actuality, they're serving the adversary. Thank you for that answer. Okay. All right, we appreciate your call. Thank you. Once again, the number is 319-527-6239. We'll have a few more minutes, family. Again, if you have any questions or comments, dial that number, press number one, and we'll add you in the conversation. Again, my special guest is Yeshua Ben Yisrael. I left this Facebook link in the description box. You're going to have to give me the YouTube page so I can put it in the description box as well <laughs> okay. for those who want to follow him and uh, check out some of his videos. But again, uh, the lesson is how did Israel become Gentiles? And of course, the show is going to be in the archives on YouTube, on the iTunes podcast, and of course on Blog Talk Radio at www.blogtalkradio.com forward slash debate talk for you. I'm going to check my email again, but uh, anything else you want to bring out, you can do that. Go ahead. Uh, no, man, I'm, I'm pretty much done, man. Like, uh, I deal with the questions and things in this place. We're pretty much over with. All right, cool, man. So, so far, I'm checking the email. Hold on. Mm, I don't see any more questions in the email right now. Looking on social media. But, uh, yeah, we appreciate you, man. Uh, let the people know. Get some last words out there for the family. Go ahead. All right, man. Uh, name is Yashua Ben uh, Yisrael. Um, I have a YouTube page called Yashua Ben Yehuda. Um, also, I'm on Facebook. Yashua Ben, uh, Israel, just uh, just as well, you know, just another Hebrew Israelite that that's still, you know, following the customs and traditions of the Most High to the best of my ability. And you know, if anybody want to go on my page and things of this nature, you know, and check out my videos, you know, leave a comment, things of this nature, you know. With that being said, you know, I'm just handing it over to Sal. All right, family. Once again, we appreciate we appreciate the family out there that's tuning into the show. We do have a show tomorrow. We have a show tomorrow. Actually, we're going to have a co-host, Only Love Chica. She's going to be here live on the Bait Talk Radio. We're going to talk about African Hebrew Israelites revealed. African Hebrew Israelites revealed. We're going to have, uh, I think, like four special guests that's going to be joining us tomorrow. And my co-host, Only Love Chica, is going to be giving them some questions to answer. It's going to be a pretty powerful show tomorrow, so make sure you tune in. Again, the number is 319-527-6239, and we might have a special show on Friday. We're still working on it. It might happen. I don't want to say what it is, but right now, you know, we're going to work so far Friday show, but uh, to stay with the schedule, you want to check out the schedule, go to DT4U Radio Update on Facebook. That's DT4U Radio Update, and you can subscribe and uh, you can check out the schedule weekly and see what's going on with the brand, the Bay Talk Radio. Uh, we like the uh, support of the people out there. And please, if you like this show, you like the content, you love the various special guests, you love the segments, support this brand by going to paypal.com and donate to the show. Again, that's www.paypal.com and use the email debate talk for you at gmail.com. Also, you can use Cash App. Download the Cash app to your smartphone. That's another easy and safe way to donate and do money transactions. I have Cash app. It's very reliable. Again, all you got to do is go to the app, download Cash app, and you can send your donation. It'll help keep the show on the air. Blog Talk Radio have monthly fees that we must pay in order to stay on the air. So, again, family, we appreciate the support. If you want to donate, 
Go to PayPal.com. Use the email, TheBayTalkForYou at gmail.com. And same thing goes for Cash App. Use the email, TheBayTalkForYou at gmail.com. Of course, check the description box if you happen to miss this audio. And you can check out everything in the description box. All right, guys. So we're going to see you guys tomorrow. Take care and God bless.